Hi, Kayla. Welcome. Could you explain a little bit about who you are and what you do for those that don't know you? I'm uh, Chelsea Melcher's sister. I work at a credit union as a personal banker representative. So I do loans for people and make new bank accounts and help people handle their finances. Awesome. And the reason why we're going to have a little conversation today is because we were actually having this conversation with our coffee. And then we thought, you know what, there's probably a lot of people that would be interested or benefit to hear things like this. And so you were just talking about how you are not on social media. So what all does that mean? Do you have any accounts for anything or what are you not on and what are you on? Um, I am, I am not on anything. I don't think I don't have a Facebook. I don't have an Instagram. I don't have, I think I still have a really old Pinterest from when I was a kid that I don't really use, but that would be the only social media account that I have. Mm -hmm. And what, what do you feel like was the story behind what made you decide Because you were at some point, you were more on social media and kind of what was the process behind or maybe the motivation of getting off of social media? Well, I had a Facebook account and some other social media accounts, but Facebook was the biggest one at that time. And I was going through some really big changes with my personal life. And I realized that I really didn't want a bunch of people that I didn't know asking questions about stuff that I didn't really feel like was their business. And I, like the people that I wanted to talk to about those changes, knew about them and talked to them about it. But I didn't want a bunch of people seeing things on my social media account and asking me a bunch of questions that I didn't really feel comfortable answering to those people. And so really, essentially, it could be like an invasion of privacy for people that are not in close uh, proximity of your life, emotionally, at least, and having the ability to kind of peer in and, and view things. Oh, yeah, that's definitely how I felt about it. And like there's each person on social media has like what, like 500 or more friends on there and how many of those people are actually people that you would even have a conversation with in real life like so many of those people are just people that were in your high school class like they're not people that you would actually want to talk to about things in your life so having them view all these different details of your life through social media and feel like they have rights to that because of being on social media. It's definitely an invasion of privacy and it kind of builds like a false sense of relationships that aren't a genuine relationship with a person where you're not actually on an intimate level with them. You're not actually even having real conversations in real life. Like if you pass these people on the road or on the highway, would you even wave to them? Probably not. But yet you're putting all of these things on social media for all of these hundreds of people to look at and to view and to make judgments on. And how long have you been social media free? Uh, I've been social media free over four years now. So let's talk about your experience with that, like the changes that you have felt have happened in your life, maybe the benefits, the things that you don't even have to worry about now because you're not on social. Well, it's it saves a lot of time, like a lot of people spend a lot of time just scrolling through social media every day. Like if you add up all those little times, that's not really doing anything valuable And instead, you're using that time to actually do something in your real life instead of looking at other people's lives. Uh, It also, I also don't have to deal with questions from people that I wouldn't be talking to. And 
um, on social media, like anyone can message you and try to talk to you and comment on things that you are saying and bring their opinion and their judgment on. And now that you're not on social media, you don't have to deal with that. Or even having like strangers that you don't know messaging you and trying to talk to you. Or uh, you, you don't have to do this comparison game by looking at other people's lives and thinking about how that compares to where you're at. And maybe you knew this person and they're in your same age range and you look at their social media and feel like, oh, well, they're so much more successful than you or their marriage looks happier or their family looks happier. Or they have a better business. They did a better degree. Like you can really focus on who you are and your life in the moment instead of just being bombarded with all these other people and images and all these other people's lives that you're really not a part of with that social media really gives you this false sense of being a part of someone's life that you're not really a part of and almost this intimacy with someone that isn't really there so being off of social media, you really have the opportunity to build relationships the way that you want to build them. So you go out and you have the conversations that you want to have with someone and it really frees that. It frees you to have a real intimacy with other people compared to a false sense of we know you, but these people don't really know you. And it really gives you the freedom to develop relationships the way that you want to and have certain people that are just acquaintances that you're okay with that and have other people that are your close friends that know those intimate details about you and your life. That's amazing. So it's really a, a way to put relationships in your life on your terms and not feel bombarded. And it seems like it's one of the highest forms of self-care that we that we have. And and also what I'm hearing you say is that it, it's kind of a way to protect yourself because we as human beings are so apt to compare. And so by removing yourself from even that temptation and not even a temptation, but just that's what you see. You see everyone's highlights and removing yourself from that is a way to protect yourself, protect your mind um, and, and to have those relationships that are on your terms in instead what do you feel like has happened with relationships probably uh, in the past few years and what have you noticed with relationships specifically that you're like well I don't have to struggle with that thankfully because I'm protecting myself by removing myself from social media um, but it's it's something that maybe you notice with other people or society as a whole It really frees you to eliminate the judgment and eliminate the comparison and the toxicity. Like social media can be extremely toxic when you are just looking at the good things about other people's lives. And instead of actually building the relationships with them and talking about deeper things or having like the actual experience of being someone with someone in the moment. So without being on social media, like the only people that can talk to me are the ones that I give my phone number to. I don't have this space where anyone at all that I ever met in a course of my life can send me a message or that person that I've had no relationships with, with five years that I would never want to talk to again for whatever reason. Like they don't have that freedom to like you control who you give what to. And it really frees you to develop those relationships in ways that are on your terms and have the different levels of intimacy. So for me, I've really been able to develop genuine friendships where you can meet with someone and have real conversations, but also start from zero instead of starting from a place where you have an impression of who this person is based on their social media. Like, well, I know this and this about you and I know you have a family or I know you have. Instead, you don't know. You're It's like a blank slate. So you really can develop those relationships based on what they give you and you give them. 
That's amazing. And when you say start from zero, it seems like there would be a lot of people that would be like, I actually don't know what that means, or I don't know how to have a conversation with somebody for the first time, or what are the the things that you would commonly say? So what would you say would, if you were meeting someone for the very first time, what would be the kind of things that you would want to ask them not being on social media? Well, I mean, you can really start from wherever. That's the freedom of it. Like you can start the conversation in whatever way that you choose. So you can introduce yourself. Like if it's someone that maybe, you know, from a work circle, you can start by talking about work and then see where that goes. Or if you're at a social event, you could talk about maybe joint people that you know and go from there and start with whatever common ground you have based on the situation that you're in. Or you can really start with whatever you want. Like there's no set term of how to talk to somebody. Like you can build the intimacy on whatever level. Like you really can start from, I don't know you and let's get to know each other a little bit in whatever way that means to you in the circumstance. And so what if someone was to say, well, I don't want to go off social media or even say take a social media break because sometimes for businesses or things, they still need to have a a presence on there. Um, But if someone was to say, I don't want to miss out, I don't want to get off social media because I don't want to miss what's going on in the world. What would you say? There are definitely other ways to know what's going on in the world besides social media and all of the content that's on there. But I would say to just try it anyways. Like even if it's not for a long period of time and you don't want to delete your account, I would suggest that you just try a day or a week or whatever where you put your phone away and instead of doing that, you just live your life and be present in the moment that you are in. And see how that affects you and see if that affects how you view yourself in your life and how you view relationships or how much time that you have that you aren't wasting. Like a lot of people spend at least an hour a day or more on social media. They'll think about what you could be doing with that hour instead that would actually be good for your health, your mental health, and try doing that for a week and just take a week off of social media and spend that time doing something of value to you and see if there's any result. And if it's not for you, that's fine. But you might find that there are really good, valuable things that you have from that. That's awesome. And you've mentioned a couple times now being in the moment and you just knowing you, you have this beautiful piece about you. And um, I think that part of that could probably be connected to the fact that you're not on social media. And and for people that want to have more peace, that want to have more in the moment, or maybe they're like, I want to be in the moment, but what exactly does that mean? Or, okay, I'm sitting here and I made myself go outside. I'm going to get sit on my porch and try to be in the moment, but I don't know how to do that. What, what kind of maybe the first steps that they could do or or think about to try to actually be in the moment? How does someone be in the moment? So you start by whatever you're doing at that time, focusing on those things. So especially with social media, you're bombarded with distractions and other people's lives and all those other things. So instead, so for example, if you are out on your porch or whatever, you're out in nature, start to look at the beauty that's around you and just look around and be observant of what there is, whether it be the sunrise or the trees or start with the different senses and what do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? And what beauty is there in the world that comes from those things? Um, And another thing that is a really good way to be in the moment is to think about and be grateful for whatever it is that you are doing in the moment and what beauty there is in that. So if it's being with your husband, to think about your relationship with them in relation to the moment, but also like what a blessing they are 
in your life or with your children or if you are outside just what the beauty of the world is and to focus on that for a few minutes instead of thinking about what you have to do next for the day on your to-do list or what somebody's saying on social media and to just put that away for long enough to think about what is going on in the present and what do you have to be grateful for in the even the small moment that you're in. That's that's really beautiful. And what I hear you saying is that it's a choice because maybe your brain wanders, maybe your brain likes to worry. But then if you are constantly choosing to bring yourself back to the present and say, no, I'm going to think about what I see or what I hear or what I touch or taste and what I'm grateful for. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's definitely a choice and it's definitely something that takes probably time, but really mindfulness of doing and when your brain maybe starts to wander to bring it back to that. That's really beautiful. Well, thank you, Kayla, so much for having this conversation with me. It was so nice to have you on. You're welcome. I want you to imagine what it would be like if you had so much focus, so much zen, so much peace, so much calmness and so much excitement at the same time before performance. As in like you're not getting in your head, you're not freaking out, you're not becoming a basket case or you're not a hot mess. So if you feel like sometimes that is you, imagine what it would feel like if that wasn't the case, if that wasn't a problem anymore. It would be pretty awesome, right? So what is the first step to that? Working with your mindset. So if this is something that's of interest to you, I recommend going to stopcaringwhatthethink.com. If you're a performer and you wanna have more confidence, if you wanna get out of your head, these are tips and tricks that I'm offering to you for free. It's a free resource that can help you have more confidence to manage that anxiety and just to feel like you can enjoy life again. You can enjoy performing. That's what it's all about, right? So stopcaringwhatthethink.com. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. I post new videos every Wednesday and a new podcast every Friday. Thanks.